Right now, we will be looking through the newspaper headlines and uh, we begin with the Nation newspaper. The major story here says uh, 180 billion naira palliatives, Afeni Ferry, Ohaneze, Pandef, Hill, federal government, as uh, NEF kicks. Uh, Quara announces non-partisan committee to handle distribution, plateau to generate social register intervention, timely, says Ondo acting governor. Another story here says, why I was set free after arrest for coup against the Bacha, General Onoja speaking. Notorious terrorist leader with 16-year-old girl. Hmm? Uh -uh. Yeah. The story, okay, I'm, I'm happy someone took that story because I'd like to hear the details. How DPP reports misled court to set murder suspects free investigation. My suicide bit story by Lagos socialite Farida. The strange husband labels her action at Nollywood drama. <laughs> CBN returns the BDCs to forex markets with new rules. Niger echoes defense chiefs await instruction on D Day. Who has a story here on the front page of the Nation newspaper? Inside story, anyone? No, no, no. Within the front page. Front so okay. we know we've been following the story of. Um, the challenge Nigeria has been facing with Forex, you know, the yeah. fact that we don't have enough, the fact that Naira keeps dropping, but you know, Naira gained over the past few days, which is good news, um, because there's a lot of policy being changed. So the story now is that the CBN has allowed the Bureau de Change access Operators, back yeah. to foreign exchange markets, but with new guidelines. They've been clamoring for it that giving um, only the money develop deposit banks ability to do the, to the I and E window mm. is not going to solve our problems. Mm -hmm. We should also allow broad exchange. That would reduce the speculation. Um, yeah, arbitrage and speculation between the official and the mm -hmm. unofficial market. So um, the Naira yesterday closed at 810 to a dollar in the parallel market, which is amazing news considering that just a few days ago it was nine oh, ah my sister <laughs> businesses are businesses are, are not are, smiling are not They're smiling not it's, it's a terrible season mm. for businesses that are dependent on dollar while in the i window i and e window that's the investor ex, um, ex, exporters window it is 739 to a dollar um so even though he has lost we had lost over 40 percent right now it's 30 percent in value of um, the dollar to the naira and the CBN policy is extensive, mm. and I'm praying there is stiff implementation of this new regulation. That's always the yeah. challenge. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's the challenge we have. We have it good on paper, but implementation is always a challenge, and that's where a lot of persons are speaking. Mm -hmm. We have these policies. We, it looks good, but then why is it that we find it difficult to implement? Mm. We hope that this time around we'll get it right and uh, we get some stability in the economy because that mm. issue has affected mm. a lot of things. In fact, Absolutely. people said that we were not even ripe enough to float the Naira mm. as when it was. So, but then we'll see how things pan out at the end of the day. Yeah. So I, you have a story here? Yes. Which one? Notorious terrorist leader mm -hmm. with 16-year-old girl. Mm. So the leader of the notorious terrorist group in Niger State, Dogo Gide, has married a 16-year-old Christian girl, mm. right, in a community also in the area. And Dogo Gide has been in the news lately for being responsible for shooting down the Air Force M171 helicopter in which 26 soldiers lost their lives um, during the week, or I think upper week. And so, he now goes on to marry this 16-year-old girl, and the story doesn't highlight if she was married under duress, mm. but it just... Well, it has to be under duress, in <laughs> a sense. She married She's her, 16. and there were celebrations around, and mm. this, um, at, at the wedding, there were bandits protecting the area. Wow. Mm. Right, mm -hmm. to be sure that nobody interferes. <laughs> Please, it was a wedding. And they said they killed rams and they just oh. distributed it to the but people. But actually, around. this is not funny because it's her beautiful years yes. government. that has been taken and, and away know. from her as it is. And it's without her consent. I would say that the article does that it is without mm -hmm. her consent. The article did not say, yeah, but we I know but as a that it's a 16 year old Northerner. She might be thinking she's ripe for marriage. Yeah, no, sure. I, no, I, see, I beyond being ripe for marriage, it's about mm -hmm. who she's getting married to. Mm. So, well, she might not. That's be the major concern. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. Uh, in her eyes, she's marrying a. There's no way she boy. doesn't know. Yeah. Boy. Yeah. Hey, there's no way. She, there's no way she doesn't know. They <laughs> see these things. These things are happening around them. Mm. So there's no way that she doesn't Logo know. But also said that it's not out for the community. That the community guys are on his side, but is after the military who are bent on frustrating their activities. Wow. Well, so he's not bold. Yes, so he made some a statement. statements also, and hmm. those were one of them. That, that that, that's a bold statement mm -hmm. coming from, from him, but we hope that the authorities who are out after them will know what to do, what steps to take with regards yeah. to this. But I have, let me quickly take this major story. Talking about the 180 billion naira palliatives that the federal government put forward, um, according to reports, various groups are lauding the government for taking these steps. The 36 states of the federation, as well as the federal capital territory, will have 5 billion naira truckloads of grains. Talking about 100,000 bags of rice for each state, uh, about 40,000 bags of fertilizers for for each state as well. And then this 5 billion naira, 52% will be given as grants and 48% is loans that will be returned in 20 months. But the issue is, now that you know your state governor will be getting 5 billion naira, ensure you follow the money mm. to understand how this money is being disbursed, how the grains are being disbursed such that everyone as much as possible, gets to benefit from this palliative being put forward by the government. It is a good thing that the government has decided that to involve the 36 states of the Federation to be part of the process. And then we see Quara State saying a non-partisan committee will handle the distribution. We hope that every other state will do so, as such well. that mm. they, there'll be some level of transparency and then trust can be reposed on government to deliver Mm -hmm. on dividends of democracy. Mm -hmm. Any other story here? No. no. Let's move forward. Mm -hmm. So the Punch newspaper now. All right. Before we go to the Punch newspaper, we have to go on a break. When we return, we'll continue looking through the newspaper headlines to stay with us. All right. Thank you for staying with us. Uh, this segment, we're looking through the newspaper headlines. And uh, next, we're going to the Saturday Punch. The major story here says subsidy marketers demand transparency as ex depot cost exceeds pump price. And some riders, federal government insisting on current petrol price means subsidy is back. Marketers are saying that. Say subsidy inevitable to maintain current pump price at 568 naira to 617 naira per liter. Then another story here I was duped by a Norwegian. Agent returned with nothing, ex-midfielder says. Hmm. I was duped by a Norwegian agent returned with nothing, ex-midfielder says. My husband shot dead in my arms over land dispute. Widow of Lagos chief is speaking. A really sad story there. And uh, another story here, Tinubu didn't other removal of all eyes on the judiciary billboards. Arkan DG speaking. Lagos socialite apologizes, blames failed marriage for suicide attempt. Another story, Equus Army ready to invade Niger, says defense chiefs. Who has a story on this, on the punch? Toby, you have any story here? Yes, the land dispute. Okay. So my husband, our husband shot dead in... <laughs> 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 you have to think that. Over land dispute. So there was this land dispute somewhere in Ibejuleki. Um, the person who passed on is Chief Fatai Jubril, the slain ballet of Lotu Town in Ibeju, Leki local government area of Lagos State. Mm -hmm. And so on this particular day, his wife was just outside washing clothes. She's a nursing mom with three, a three-month-old baby. And oh. um, some people came mm -hmm. alongside. So the, there was a land dispute by, with another chief identified only as Omotola in a neighboring town. And so this man came with police officials. They first beat her husband, mm. and then the Omotola guy instructed the police escort to shoot him. Oh, wow. Uh -uh. Yes. And mm. they shot him, and the man passed on, unfortunately. Well, the police also is currently investigating the matter, and the article says there are no reports yet, but very soon something will be done about it. Something has to be done mm -hmm. because this is not nice. How you just mm -hmm. order someone to shoot someone. Mm -hmm. I mean, land matters, eh? Land matters are... Uh, for today. 
It's a sad, it's a sad situation yeah, that we, sad we have a regulation challenge, we have abuse of power, mm. we have manipulation of the, mini, of the institutions that are meant to protect us yes, by some people. Because yes. yes. when you yeah. go and see those tussles, you see police officers or you see NSCDC, people that are, are actually meant to protect, protect. enforcing against, it's just wrong. Right. Mm. Let me take this um, entertainment story. Uh, it, the headline says, kissing actor with bad breath, mm -hmm. weirdest movie experience. I know you think and, that's good. <laughs> and it's coming from um, Diva Gold. Diva Gold is a skit maker and actress. Her real name is Ulukemi Ni Aluko. And she said that kissing an actor with a bad breath was her most unusual experience. She said that uh, she was on a movie set and when she moved close to, you know, kiss the guy because of the role that she was supposed to play, mm -hmm. she, the breath just almost took Over her took. out. <laughs> but she was still trying to be a professional and not make the kiss too uh, deep. But then the man was still, the actor <laughs> was still coming, you know, after. Because he wasn't aware. Yes, he, about, he, he really it. wanted to get into the role. Mm. And it's just really important for everyone to take their dental or their oral, oral health, hygiene, yeah. you know. Yeah. You know, seriously. Seriously. Exactly. Right. Let's, let me quickly take this story, talking about the ECOWAS uh, story. We know the situation in Niger, the coup in Niger, and um, ECOWAS standby force met in Ghana, and they are saying that they are ready to invade Niger to restore constitutional order. They are not going there for war, but to restore constitutional order if diplomacy fails. Mm -hmm. That is what they said. If diplomacy fails, Fails. And so they are hoping that the conversations that will be had in the coming days, because the, the military junta in uh, Niger is saying they are open to having conversations. They mm -hmm. had said that uh, with ECOWAS. And we are hoping there will be some positive development in the coming days with regards to the conversations <clears throat> that they will be having. Yes, there are calls for the return of Bazoum as the president, but um, that will be determined with whatever conversation ECOWAS has with the military, it will determine if Bazoum will be returned or not. But what is expected is that there will be a return to constitutional order in the coming days. Any other story? Yes, a really sad story of Utubasi, who is um, a Nigerian footballer, um, lost his father yes. when he was very young. Mm -hmm. Later on, he, he wanted to play football as young as when he was nine. Mm -hmm. As a teenager, I think about 12, 13, he went to Quara by himself because, of course, his mom was struggling to raise the children. And while he was in Quara, the mom said she knew that it was a bit weird to abandon her, her little child to, be, to go to Quara. But the boy loved football and he was able to play in the Nigerian Premier League. And from there, he was scouted to join a Norwegian team, which was a big deal. You know, and mm -hmm. there are pictures of him playing in Norway, playing for a team, but his agents actually scammed him. Wow. Mm. He didn't get a good contract, and he had to pay for his taxes out of the little allowance he had. And at the end of the day, he had to return back to Nigeria with nothing. Wow. So, unfortunate. Um, it's a very unfortunate situation. He's sharing the story that um, till now he doesn't really understand what was the discrepan discrepancy between his contract. He just signed because he was trusted the agent was taking him there. He played well. Mm -hmm. He heard that he made a lot of money, mm -hmm. but, but he, he never got any anything. of the money. And he so. came back to Nigeria. Not, his picture looks like this is, this is not a picture of someone that had gone to play at that level based on how he's looking. And his family are still living in abject poverty. We, the people of Nigeria, hurting ourselves, scamming ourselves, and it's just a sad story. Very it sad. is, uh, and it's a lesson to others. Ensure you know what your contracts, what, what's in the, the details of your contracts are. And if you need a lawyer to also come in to play, to help you interpret whatever it is, so that you get your money, you work for it, and someone else shouldn't reap or benefit from your effort at the end of the day. But let's quickly move on now to Saturday's sun. And the major stories here is fireworks over Tinubu's ministers, upset shock over ministerial portfolios, round pegs not in round holes. Uh, ACF, Ariwa Consultative Forum, is saying that. Ministers' list shows Tinubu's determination to bring positive change. YCE president status as petroleum minister divides stakeholders. And another one here says, Oyoma Kinde declares August 20 annual public holiday for traditional worshippers. Uh, for 100,000 uh, malnourished children in Northeast, UNICEF 
Saying this, we'll resist plans to scrap Niger Delta Ministry, Pandef, reacting Okwenembe turmoil persists in Bayelsa community. Kidnapping, how we implicate innocent Nigerians. Suspects are saying this. Deadly blow to sit at home. Southeast governors, IPOP move against enforcers. Life returns to Enugu, other towns, cities. Um, there we have uh, Southwest Catholic bishops, one echoes against war in Niger. Joss, how prison officers escorted inmates inmate to withdraw ransom. Plus, government petitions police six probe. Who has the story? Damala. Uh, yes, sir. I have uh, how prison officers escorted inmate to withdraw ransom. Mm. So the Preto State Ministry of Justice has asked the police in Jos, the state capital, to investigate the status of a suspect, Jethro Ungusen, an inmate of Jos Custodial um, Center, how he was escorted to a bank by prison officials to withdraw money. Mm. So Mr. <laughs> Jethro Nguse was one of the suspects uh, that was um, arrested in relation to uh, Padarie Defon's kidnap. That's the father of the former governor of Plato Joshua State, Darie. Joshua yeah. Darie. So Padarie, 93, was kidnapped and killed after his abductors had allegedly collected 10 million naira ransom mm. from his family. Only, and there was a court order to remand this suspect in prison, but he was seen in a bank withdrawing parts of the ransom. Okay. So it was one of the bank officials that alerted the uh, A division of the Plato State Police Command, and then they stomped the bank to arrest the suspect. So the Ministry of Justice is um, petitioning the police, and they are asking them to produce an update on the current investigation how the man escaped from their custody, and uh, if he was granted the bill, they need information about his shorties because they are really, really concerned about the you know, compromise and misuse of privilege or unauthorized activities in the light of charges of criminal conspiracy, kidnapping, and murder of Padre Defuan mm. against the defendants. Okay, so sure. they need an update. Mm -hmm. I, have, I have the story on the World Humanitarian Day where UNICEF says 400,000 malnourished children are in the Northeast. So there was a press conference in Bornu um, over the week, and UNICEF was the one who held the press conference. And they called on organizations to give more support for children in the conflict and prone areas. The UNICEF has actually also moved to the area to provide support for children, with both severe and moderate cases of um, malnutrition. The article links malnutrition also in the area to the kidnappings in the area, the um, insurgency also in the area. Yeah. And all these things at the end of the day cannot be as standalones, they are mm -hmm. interwoven. And yeah. when we see the effect of one thing like um, insurgency, at the heart of it um, is poverty. Yes, exactly. At the heart of it. At the heart of it. So yeah. all these things are also um, things that the UNICEF is currently looking mm -hmm. to lend a voice, especially in the northeast in Nigeria. Really sad.